Okay, lesson 12.6 deals with two very important definitions and two extremely powerful and helpful tests. Your learning targets up here more or less describe that. It says, I can determine if a series converges absolutely. Now, if a series converges absolutely, that's going to mean something very special. We'll talk about that in a moment. Also, I can determine if a series uh, is conditional, converges conditionally. I will talk about that. And then two incredibly helpful tests, the ratio test, which is used extensively. It's the most often used test you're ever going to see. And then the root test, which is very similar to it and can help you out in a few other aspects. But let's start with what I've uh, highlighted here. A series, you know, sigma a sub n, is absolutely convergent if the series a sub n in absolute value is convergent. And absolute convergent, I want you to think about absolute value convergent. It, it just means put absolute value inside a sigma. And if that series converges in absolute value, then we'd say you're absolutely convergent. Now, notice in the parentheses here, it says if your series already is positive, then obviously absolute convergence is going to be exactly the exact same series, the exact same convergence. But even more to the point, look at this star right here. There is a wonderful theorem that says if a series is absolutely convergent. That means if you put absolute value bars around it and it converges, then it converges without absolute value bars. If a series is absolutely convergent, then it converges regularly. It converges without absolute value. That's what this says. Now, right now, that could be incredibly useful and helpful. You look at example one, and guys, we've spent two days now going over alternating series. And if I give you example one, undoubtedly kids would say, oh, it's like another homework problem. I'm just going to use the alternating series test. And well, you could. But notice what they're asking here. They're asking something very different. They're saying, does this series uh, have absolute convergence? Convergence, excuse me. Is the series absolutely convergent? To test that, you know, what you're really going to do is say, well, let's see. What if we put absolute value around that? Now, guys, as soon as you do that, that negative 1 raised to a power, regardless of whether it's positive or negative, will it not just become simply a 1 once we reduce it? Do you know what that's really saying? We really have the simplified series. 1 over n squared. And notice our counter. n begins at 1 and it goes up to infinity. n itself is always positive, in other words. What kind of series is that, 1 over n squared? It's a p series. So we could say this, which is a convergent p series. Hey, that's pretty exciting. So. We have absolute convergence. So I can say this series, negative 1 in parentheses to the n minus 1 all over n squared, is absolutely convergent. By the way, here's the follow-up. Therefore, this series converges. Now, sometimes kids almost look at that second statement and they'll say, why are you repeating yourself? I'm not. I'm now saying that you converge without absolute value. Do you see what I'm saying? There'd be no need for the alternating series test in that regard, would there? That's pretty exciting. So God bless you. So if you're looking for absolute convergence, if you get that to be true, you get convergence without the absolute value thrown in for free. So that's pretty cool. 
Now, guys, I want you to take a look at uh, example number two and quickly see what I hope is going to be something a world apart. Please cross off this original problem. Let's change this to uh, the series from 1 to infinity of the cosine of n all over n squared. Notice I'm not saying the cosine of n pi like you had in an earlier homework problem, but just the cosine of n. Now, sometimes kids will look at that and they'll be like, that's weird. I don't see a negative 1 to a power. And let's make sure we're on the radian mode. We are. You might say, oh, look at that. I, I'll type in the cosine of 1. And you'll get that. Oh, what if I got the cosine of 2? Oh, I get something negative. Oh, how about that? I could plug in the cosine of 3. I get something negative, and yet we're not alternating. Do you see what I'm saying? Yes, we have negative terms getting thrown in here. But they're not changing from positive to negative, from positive to negative. All of a sudden, you've got two negatives in a row. The alternating series test wouldn't even be an option, would it? So you'd say, nuts. Oh, my gosh, what do I do? Well, you know what? First of all, the direction is saying, would you check if your series is absolutely convergent? Sometimes kids look at that and they're thinking, how on earth would that be helpful? In other words, what they're saying in essence, hey, let's check if this series of the absolute value of the cosine of n all over n squared. By the way, would we agree that n squared is always positive and we can even pull it out of the absolute value bars, right? I mean, n is a positive value of 1 to start with. And then it gets bigger. So there's no way that would ever turn negative. It's always positive. And sometimes kids look at that and they'll say, oh, nuts. Well, at, at least we've got something to look at. Do you know what, though? This is turning into, as soon as you put absolute value around this, guys, you're going back to 12.4 where everything was positive, and you could use the basic comparison test and the limit comparison test. So even though this series in its original form was involving negatives and it wasn't alternating, you put absolute values around there, and at the very least, we can go back to something that we've been working with, which is always a good thing. And then you could look at that, and you could say, huh, cosine of n... Uh, let's see, if I was doing a basic comparison test, uh, our goal was always, do you see a hidden geometric series or do you see a hidden P-series somewhere in here? And I hope kids would be like, yeah, like the P-series from example one. See that? You got an N squared down there. You think, oh, wow, maybe I could talk about a boundary. That cosine of N must always be bigger or smaller than something. It's always what? I heard somebody say it less than or equal to 1, right? How about we let b sub n be 1 over n squared? There's a very nice p-series, and I also know that a sub n must be smaller than it. So, wow, right now we can say that uh, this series, b sub n, is a convergent P series and A sub N would always be less than B sub N. What can I say now? That this series A sub N in this original form does what? Well, it, it will. We can say it converges by what test? The basic comparison test. Why? Because, you know, what we did before is, you know, we had these uh, colors standing out, guys. You might remember uh, we had the, the blue dots somewhere, and you know, we said, hey, look, you know, the blue dots might be for uh, your B sub N uh, partial sums, right? And uh, your red stars would represent your A sub N. Well, your red stars would always be smaller. And you can say, hey, if... B sub n levels off for its partial sums. 
Asa then has to level off too. That's the basic comparison test. But then that's what Christina was just saying. If A sub n, if this thing right here is going to be converging, that means my original series is what? Absolutely convergent. You see, I can now say, therefore, this series, cosine of n all over n squared, is absolutely convergent. And therefore, it convergent, it's convergent without absolute value. You get regular convergence thrown in for free. So we wouldn't even have begun to have a test to work with the cosine of n over n squared. You don't have an alternating series. This is a way around it. Okay, we doing okay? All right, let's look at conditional convergence. That's our second definition. Conditional convergence is uh, a series that's conditionally convergent if it converges, but it doesn't converge in absolute value. It's not absolutely convergent. So you still converge, but you don't converge in absolute value. Sometimes kids would almost be in a state of shock, like, wow, that could happen? Yes. Here's a great example. Take a look at example three, and I'm changing the problem to make it shorter and simpler. Please uh, cross out the original problem. Let's make it uh, the summation from 1 to infinity of negative 1 to the n minus 1 all over n. Let's take a look at what's happening in absolute value. In absolute value, guys, I hope we can see that very clearly this series just becomes 1 over n. What kind of series is that? Harmonic. And you can say, which is a divergent harmonic series? So you're not always going to say, hey, I put absolute value around my, my series and everything works out just fine. You might put absolute value around your series and say, wait a minute, I'll have a harmonic series or a p-series that diverges. That just means you're not absolutely convergent. So you'd say, therefore, uh, this series is not absolutely convergent. Now, you should still check if this original series converges without absolute value. Now, by the way, we did that as one of our examples in the 12.5 notes. This is the alternating harmonic series. This is the alternating harmonic series. Uh, the alternating harmonic series converges by the alternating series test. It's such a very famous property that you can use that as a statement of fact. The harmonic series, just the classic one, clearly diverges. But the alternating harmonic series, surprisingly, we saw a couple days ago, does converge using the alternating series test. So therefore, this series right here is what we call conditionally convergent. It does not converge when you put absolute value around it. But if you just checked it without absolute value, you do get convergence. So that is quite possible to occur. Okay, yes? N normally you do, this is the one time where you wouldn't. Uh, you know, because this is such a famous series, it, it's like a statement of fact. Normally, like if I gave you negative 1 to the n minus 1 over n squared, show that your b sub n plus 1 is smaller than b sub n. Show your limit of b sub n goes to 0. Then say by the alternating series test, this series would converge. But this is like a statement of fact. Okay? Uh, so, yeah, what I just want to do real quickly is introduce the most powerful test you're going to use all year. And that's the ratio test. And uh, the ratio test... 
is going to work with an n plus 1 term divided by an n term. And our video is wrapping up. We'll have to pick this up.